This conference will now be recorded. Uh, without uh, going into nitty gritties uh, of uh, details of every technology. Solar energy or renewable energy is a vast area. My you see love affair with this area started 45 years ago at a time when people used to laugh uh, at me that uh, the price of oil is one dollar a barrel and this uh, person is just trying to uh, make a solar cooker solar water heaters so from that particular point of view uh, never got discouraged but i knew that a time is going to come when everybody will talk about solar energy and i was right uh, in my opinion so this my lecture is basically structured like this i will it is a elementary so if anybody has some detailed question in question and r i'll be able to do justice to it because uh, to give all overall structure about solar energy itself is, is a very vast area and it will take time why energy is important Number two is present status of fossil fuels and their implications for development and sustainability and climate change. Introduction to solar energy application and the present status of solar energy in India. Description of different solar energy technologies. So then I go to energy is very important for the human life. If you say that our evolution started with energy, if we have not uh, mastered the art of uh, making fire we we would have been uh, like monkeys still moving on the trees etc so this particular fire or energy started the concept of home because home is where hearth is and if you close your eyes and see that uh, there is no sector of economy industrial transport agriculture defense commercial all these are basically dependent on energy and uh, it uh, is uh, very important uh, and because of that it has a geopolitical and economic and environmental implication if you look at all the wars which have been fought in last uh, 100 years all the wars have uh, uh, you see energy at the center of the focus it was basically to you see take the control of uh, the energy sources, fossil fuel energy sources at that time, whether it is Iraq war, whether it is Iran war, any particular war you look about, whether it is World War I, World War II, all of them, they were basically because of uh, the energy. As far as India is concerned, it ranks uh, sixth uh, as far as the energy demand is concerned, and 85% of our total oil requirements are imported uh, with the price from 50 to 70. The implication of these are such that every $1 rise in the price of one barrel of oil, countries spend 2,700 crores per year extra. And you know that when 20 degrees goes in, how much is the impact on the energy? And number two is that uh, the lifespan of our commercial energy sources is very limited. And uh, our uh, we are a very great dichotomy. For example, our per capita consumption of energy is very very small we are one of the lowest in the rung and we are around three times less than the world average and we have a very important energy has a very important role to play in our development and the situation is so pathetic that 500 million people of this country have not seen what is electricity 800 billion still cook with the food their food with the biomass like cow dung agriculture residues etc so if we have to give them the decent energy our requirements are going to be very large and our resources of the commercial energy sources as this bureaucraf tells is that at the present rate of consumption oil is only 30 years natural gas 40 years uranium 80 years and coal is 230 years in the life of a country or a civilization 30 40 60 or 80 years nothing so there is no way out we have to find out uh, the ways uh, that in spite of uh, these uh, fossil fuel resources which are very meager we have to make uh, sure that our uh, needs of energy are uh, basically met
Now, apart from uh, the meager resources, there is another factor which has come, that is the climate change. So everybody knows climate change is uh, changing. And uh, as a result, there is a lot of uh, which countries are facing and already 100 uh, and uh, 190 countries have uh, joined together in Paris deal. Hello. Hello. Hello, sir. Hello. Uh, should I continue? There is some, uh, yes, some talk. You continue, Hello. please. Uh, there was some uh, mic on. Uh, so. Ah, I yeah, okay. I, I I know, I know this is a regular problem. Anyway, so what is happening is that uh, climate change has become very important and all the countries are not supposed to take the measures uh, uh, to in order to fight the climate change. And it is estimated that uh, if the temperature rises from two to five degrees increase, our rice yield will decrease by 20 to 50 percent, wheat yield 30 to 60 percent. So you can well imagine that a country with the billions of population, what is going to happen to the food security if uh, we are uh, to, you see, allow the climate change to come in. And moreover, because of the climate, there are disruptions, droughts, flood induced climate change can cause great hardship and impose and land, land loss is one of the problems that uh, if uh, because of the flooding low-lying areas get uh, and because of the sea level rise uh, around 7 million of this country will uh, have to leave uh, the areas near the coastal areas and it will create a, a lot of uh, problems so these are the reasons these my few slides were to tell you that we have no way out what to go in for uh, solar energy or renewable sources of energy. So because of the threat of climate change, so our energy sources has to be modified and we must uh, produce energy without emission. And that is where the situation solar energy comes in. This view graph gives you the idea about the solar. Actually, if you look at all sources of energy which are available on Earth, whether fossil, bio biomass, or sources, solar energy sources, everything we owe to solar energy. And this is the balance of solar energy. And uh, because some of the solar energy gets reflected 6%, uh, some is uh, reflected by the from the atmosphere, some from the clouds. Uh, and uh, then there are a lot of, uh, you see, radiation. All, all other are surface albedo. 4% is albedo when it strikes. Uh, and only 51% of the solar radiation, it, uh, uh, you see, hit the earth. And all this energy has to go back. Otherwise, what, we, what will happen is that uh, the temperature of this earth uh, will start increasing like solar cooker and we all will be dead. So this is the balance. So whatever is input, uh, output has to be there. And I look at this radiation to the atmosphere and absorbed by the, uh, you see, atmosphere, absorbed by the atmosphere, 16%. Now, this is what is creating, uh, as far as scientists, is global warming. That is, uh, earlier, uh, the, because of uh, the uh, very large use of uh, commercial energy sources, carbon dioxide is going into the atmosphere, and uh, the absor absorptivity of uh, carbon dioxide for the long wave radiations which are going out uh, is much more so with the result that the temperature is changing as a result we are saying that the glaciers are melting we are seeing that uh, there is a lot of drought somewhere and somewhere there is excess of rain all these things are happening because of the absorption of this carbon dioxide which is uh, being produced by the commercial energy sources so solar energy is uh, now one of uh, the areas uh, which are going to come to the rescue of uh, the uh, world. Now, what is the incoming solar influx uh, which is coming from sun to earth? Uh, 
it is around 1.366 which which we call it solar constant that is it is uh, above the atmosphere and while passing through the atmosphere something uh, gets scattered and uh, something uh, is reflected back etc so ultimately at the surface we get around about 1 kilowatt per square meter that is the amount of the energy it is a very weak source of energy that's why we have to have large areas in order to have uh, a uh, you see good amount of the energy and the amount of energy which is coming is we have around uh, uh, you see 1 lakh 20000 terawatts of radiation which are striking the earth and this particular energy is responsible for our circulation of the wind sir ocean current cycle of the water evaporation condensation rivers lakes biological cycle photosynthesis all biomass and life so this whole energy which is striking from the sun on to the earth is responsible for all this and at present rate world only is using 13 terawatts of energy from different sources of energy and demand for energy by 2050 is going to be 30 terawatt and demand in 2001 will uh, 2100 will be 46 terawatt so just by covering 0.16 of the land area we will be able to you see uh, get uh, with the 10% efficiency it will provide around 20 terawatts of power so this is the potential and uh, all the biomass uh, which uh, so renewable energy so basically i have already told you that solar energy wind energy biomass small hydro geothermal tidal waves ocean thermal photovoltaic and solar thermal all this are because of the solar energy which is coming and all the biomass uh, which we are using for combustion gasification it is indirect form of solar energy so now i move to that what are the applications that uh, how can we use solar energy for uh, various uh, applications so there are two types of application one is uh, the thermal application and other is the electric that's where we are using most of uh, the fuel which are we are using it is either to heat something or to produce power or to produce chemicals and all these things can be done by solar energy direct solar energy or by indirect uh, solar energy bio by the uh, you see biomass route so solar energy can be at low temperatures at medium temperature it is greater than 400 and uh, uh, less than 400 and high temperature is less than 4 so solar energy can produce low temperatures it can produce medium temperatures it can produce high temperatures above 400 and for low temperature we can use it for cooking we can use it for water heating we can use it as a solar chimney we can use it as a solar pond solar pond is a application where uh, the salt gradient is maintained in a uh, you see pond where the uh, mm -hmm. you see the concentration of uh, 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 at the bottom is less than the top so the circulation is stopped and we have solar water heater and how we do it solar water heater solar air heater power solar chimney is also for power hot water for industrial use power parabolic power industrial heating cooking and then we have for high temperature 400 degrees parabolic and central tower i am going to show you all these uh, that how they are being used and for our industrial and the process application this is the area where a large amount of uh, so you see energy is used food and beverages they the energy used for drying washing pasteurization drying sterilization heat treatment and this is the radia give you that what are the temperatures so temperatures are either less than 100 or it is between uh, uh, 100 to 150 or so similarly in the textile industry we need energy for washing bleaching dyeing and the applications are from 40 to 160 chemical industry again is boiling distilling various chemical processes and the temperatures are varying from 95 to 180 and all sectors uh, of uh, industry is free heating heat water heating of production halls etc we are over there 
so as i have shown you the earlier slide that we can uh -huh. have the temperature less than 100 we can have the medium temperature we can have the high temperature as well as and okay. this is what is happening for india at present it is not uh, just a theoretical situation when we started work in 75 everybody used to laugh but now you will see that uh, around 160 but uh, you see we are producing around uh, 180 101 you see uh, 74.1 gigawatt of power already already it is there in the form of the wind energy in the form of solar energy in the biopass or the small hydro so now solar energy has become a reality and indian uh, you see basically uh, you could say uh, total peak demand you see is uh, 164 and installed capacity on renewable energy is 74.1 so indian uh, you see plan is renewable energy plan is that by 2050 around 40 percent of the total energy which will be used in india will come from the renewable sources of energy so solar energy is no more a myth it is a reality now we go to the application part in the application part uh, what is uh, happening is that uh, one of the application if i go back uh, you see to my first uh, side when i was explaining uh, you the uh, uh this uh, i was saying that uh, the carbon dioxide is absorbed over there and this is causing the global warming so the same principle is uh, being uh, used in a solar collector or a solar cooker the idea is that the solar radiations are and this is a equipment in which we have a black surface and we have a glass or a transparent which could be plastic which could be glass anything transparent surface and uh, which has the insulation at the bottom so that the heat which is absorbed by this black surface uh, doesn't get uh, uh, lost uh, to the atmosphere so the solar radiation they come and strike the solar uh, glass plate some of it is reflected back some of it uh, is absorbed by the glass and the rest of it it goes in and uh, uh, this is absorbed by the black, black surface because we say black surface are good absorber as well as good emitter of energy. So this glass is very important. Reason is that glass has a property that it allows the short wave radiation to get in, but doesn't allow the log wave radiation to pass through this. So the solar radiations which we are getting, uh, you see from the sun, they are basically ultraviolet visible they are able to pass through this glass and when this glass gets heated it starts emitting the infrared radiation but this glass doesn't allow the infrared radiation to pass through it as a result the temperature of the temperature of the enclosure increases so if you put food into this it will get cooked if you put a plate from which the water could be passed, these are the pipes from which the cold water could be, you see the cold water is passed from the bottom and the hot water goes out. So you have a solar water heater. So this is basically the principle of the solar, uh, you see, based upon the, we call them the flat plate collectors, which can be used for cooking applications, which can be used for heating application. We can use air heat air we can pass air it gets the air heaters air heaters are used in agriculture for drying and other products uh, commercial products also water heaters uh, for the application industrial domestic and uh, commercial applications and solar cooking is for the cooking the food so all these are less than 100 degrees centigrade now there are lots of research which has taken place in order to reduce that the reflection doesn't take place we have anti reflection coating on the surface so now some of you could work on uh, the nanotube based anti-reflection coating and uh, this is a wonderful area to get into already some people have developed but if you could reduce the cost uh, you will heat you will use hit a jackpot number two is the paint this uh, black paint uh, already selective coatings are there you can now there is again a hope that with the nano particle based paint uh, the 
<clears throat> emissivity can be reduced and the absorptivity can be increased and we can uh, these are the research areas where you can work uh, and a lot of uh, uh, commercial uh, you could say applications are there so these are at our energy center now there is there, now there is another type of uh, solar collector it is evacuated tube collector what happens is that uh, the metal is inside a evacuated glass tube which is these are the glass tubes and this is basically to ensure that the convection losses uh, which are there you see here the convection losses so the convection losses become small because it is a vacuum and the efficiency of this uh, increases so these are also no commercially available systems the next one is uh, we now go to the technology solar technologies which are uh, a higher temperature that is less than 100 degrees temperature now these are trough con concentrator so these trough concentrator are basically the reflecting surfaces and the idea is that when solar energy will strike them it will come to this particular tube which uh, through which uh, we are passing uh, the uh, oil or any heat transfer fluid and this uh, fluid gets heated uh, to 300 350 degrees or 60 degrees and uh, this is the application these are the tubes which are there so every tube has a uh, uc concentrator uh, around it and uh, this uh, hot oil at 360 degrees can be used uh, can be used for production of the power by using uh, the vapor compression system so we use the benzene or other liquid whose boiling point is very low so we get very high pressure and we can get uh, that particular energy now this is this is the example this is, this is and this is the actual this is actual this is the actual uh, setup uh, in uh, us it is a 350 megawatt power plant so these are very huge power plants which uh, are there and these can produce power and we have a lot of uh, these installments uh, installations in the world and some of them they are there in the, uh, India. Can you can you move these? Can you move these people? <laughs> Next uh, comes uh, the solar dish type collectors. You see, these are also in the same range. That is uh, less than 400. So these uh, these. Ah, so, solar radiations they you see strike this uh, parabolic dish and this uh, are concentrated on the this particular receptor and uh, so at this particular well, place you get high temperatures you can put a sterling engine here you can use a Britain cycle. You can use uh, uh, some oil here, which can get heated and uh, which can produce power. And this particular dish uh, could produce around uh, 25 kilowatt of power. And when this particular dish was signed, it was that uh, this particular dish uh, <coughs> can uh, take care of uh, the environment of it. This can have requirements of a village and large number of uh, these particular solar dishes uh, have been put uh, so this use a dual axis. You require a dual axis here it is written dual axis because the reason is that the sun moves from east to west and during the day that in the morning the sun comes out in the east and it sets up in the west but during the monthly over period that is in the march uh, sun is just at the top oh, degrees to the north and 22 degrees uh, to the south uh, during the whole year so it's, and these concentrators i have uh, i have not told you one thing 
that uh, these uh, sorry to disturb hello please uh, organizers please ask uh, somebody to mute because that is disturbing they are distracting pravina uh, mishra i think anyway so everybody mute yourselves it's a humble request a lecture of a very learned professor is going on so please mute yourself everybody please mute yourself so oh. oh. are you showing pravina mishra pravina mishra please mute Hello. yes okay so in this these flat plate collector have the advantage you see solar radiation what we get directly is known as the <coughs> concentrated radiation direct solar radiation but uh, what happens is when it strikes the earth it gets reflected and these are the diffuse radiation now this is the advantage and uh, disadvantage also if you go to moon because uh, you see there is no atmosphere so solar radiation while coming from the atmosphere also you see get uh, scattered by the molecules of the gases etc so they become the diffuse radiation the shadow which you see during the day uh it is basically the shadow is because of the diffuse radiation if there are only uh, you see the direct radiation the shadows uh, and the sun is overhead you don't get this particular shadows so what happens is that for these concentrated uh, these uh, solar systems you only only the direct solar radiations are useful so that's why they are located at the places for example in rajasthan or other places where you have less amount of uh, rain or cloudy weather so this is one of the requirements uh, for uh, these particular systems that uh, because of uh, uh, because they are uh, working uh, well only because uh, they are only using the direct solar radiation so their location is very important uh, and their tracking is also very important as i have told you that you have to track your system uh, you see from east to west as well as uh, uh, you see from the azimuth point of view that is uh, uh, over the horizon also uh, towards the north and the south 23.5 now there are automatic systems you see they some move on shadows some move on a control system that you set it we know that the how much solar moves uh, uh, in both the axes uh, you see during the day so automatically the system the motor you see tracks them around two axes and uh, it is very important you see for uh, the flat plate collector it is not important to track them but uh, for these concentrator it is very important that you have two axes tracking and uh, you have to have this over there so it can generate around 25 kilowatt and it will be used this is the actual situation of this the next one is uh, the helio this is the solar tower so this is a very concept a very good concept the concept is that you have a flat uh, you see reflecting surface and this flat reflecting surface reflects the solar radiation onto a cavity solar tower cavity at the top of the solar now this is a solar tower and this is the cavity over here and all around these in a you see area of half a kilometer or 1 kilometer you have these reflectors which are concentrating the solar radiation all these are reflectors are automatically tracked For, uh, on both the axes and all the time the solar radiations are concentrating over here and you can reach the temperature 890 degrees celsius and uh, these are uh, the you see systems uh, which are uh, very important jo uh, uh, solar concentrator uh, you see thousands of this is known as a heliostat and uh, up to 10 10 megawatt systems uh, no even 100 megawatt systems are uh, you see being uh, installed uh, in different countries so this was solar one i visited this particular center excellent uh, you see piece of work and uh, solar concentration you see 
uh, the advantage with these particular solar towers is that uh, for the concave uh, you see for the uh, single line collectors the temperatures are low 360s degrees or so so you have to have a different sort of uh, uh, you see power generation system but these particular uh, solar towers have the temperatures of 600 or 700s or 800 which are the temperatures at which uh, our fossil fuel waste so power plants are working so all those particular equipments uh, can be directly used with this so it will reduce the cost it will uh, you see it can used as a hybrid also so the same system during the day can be used by solar energy and same system at night uh, can be used by some uh, either the stored heat uh, you see in this at 600 and so i'll i'll separately talk these are the molten salts are there you see these molten salts uh, can have a melting point of six to eight hundred degrees celsius so during the day what you do is that you store this solar energy into these molten salts and you can run the system even at night etc depending upon what is uh, the size of your system and what is your uh, uh, you see size of the storage system so storage is a very important area all over the world you see uh, i have the privilege that uh, uh, in india i started thermal energy storage program uh, you see in 1975 uh, 76 and uh, at that time there were only three four groups but now if you go anywhere in the world everybody is not talking about because uh, the cost of uh, the solar power generation is directly dependent upon the cost of the storage system because uh, your collector system has been uh, you see optimized but storage system if somebody would come at a very low low cost storage system which uh, has uh, you see stability for maybe 2000 cycles uh, which is non toxic non corrosive uh, uh, you see the <clears throat> vapor pressure is very less uh, i think there are a huge and huge this is the only you could say bottleneck at present in the world all over the world everybody is uh, working in this particular areas some of you could uh, uh, work in these areas i think uh, the recognition if you are able to get a system which is at a low cost uh, which is uh, uh, which is uh, cyclable over a large two three years uh, and all non toxic everything i think uh, it is another jackpot uh, which is over there and also professionally it will be a very fulfilling area so this is a close up of uh, the solar tower and uh, these are uh, the ones which are over there so i told you about storage i am just a little slide because storage itself is a area where i can speak for hours together so so thermal storage power you see what happens is if you are using the thermal storage the uh, capacity factor that is utilization factor increases to 65% which is uh, the uh, you capacity for uh, uc factor of uh, the fossil fuel based system so it, it is commercialized values problem is that if you have a solar system which only works during the day uh, you are only using it for uh, maybe 20 or 30 percent or 40 percent of the time as a result your uh, capital which is in hundreds of crores of rupees is just uh, staying idle during the 75 percent of the time so from that point of view storage is extremely important and uh, if uh, you could provide uh, the storage uh, you can increase it and if you don't provide the storage the capacity factor just reduces to 25 percent so this is uh, where uh, the situation is so extended areas now this is a just one view graph i have uh, given you as far as the storage is concerned so storage materials uh, can be sensible heat storage material it could be latent heat storage material and it could be the chemical energy storage materials and uh, the applications of sensible heat storage materials means that you can store it in metal you can store it in rocks uh, you can store it in uh, bricks uh, you can store it any uh, material whose heat capacity is very high you can even store it in these solutions also concentrated solutions uh, 
because the heat capacity of the <clears throat> you could say concentrated solutions is also very high so then you can use the latent heat storage systems so latent heat storage systems could be gas liquid system it could be gas solid system uh, it could be solid liquid system it could be solid solid system so gas uh, liquid system is evaporation of the water or the liquids when i was telling you about the concentrated system so whatever liquid uh, you are passing uh, from uh, these uh, uh, oil it can heat uh, a liquid uh, whose uh, boiling point is very low as a result that you can generate very high pressure and high pressure can uh, uh, you see work on your vapor compression system and you can produce the power you can produce mechanical power other solid gas uh, is basically a sublimation process so all these processes uh, must be reversible please that uh, you can only use uh, those particular storage materials uh, whose uh, uh, you see um, uh, phase change or uh, the chemical reactions uh, or uh, are all reversible if they are not reversible they are not uh, fit uh, for use then we have the solid liquid solid liquid uh, is one of the most uh, widely you could say studied uh, area of uh, thermal energy storage so you can uh, use it in organics uh, you have uh, uh, you see hydrated salts have been the one uh, which has been used most widely studied most widely we also did lot of work uh, and one of the biggest problem of the salt hydrates was that after few cycles uh, the material for example if you are using sodium thiosulfate it used to settle down and uh, progressively the anhydrous part uh, will you see these uh, crystals are going to settle down as a result the heat storage capacity was growing so this was a very difficult problems and uh, one of my students uh, in his phd work uh, dr joshi you now is at uh, university of florida and the faculty so we studied uh, we ultimately found out that uh, if uh, uh, you see these are not properly sealed and uh, what happens is with every cycle some of the vapors you see they go go on accumulated in through the vapor space and uh, we then defined a criteria that uh, if you add more water than what is required for the eutectic composition then the phase separation does not take place so that was our one of the biggest uh, contribution as far as uh, the solid uh, liquid uh, you see so you can use eutectics uh, you can use uh, mixtures uh, uh, of uh, these uh, for example as i have told you that in high temperature it is sodium magnesium salts uh, you can use ammonium salts because what happens is that every application uh, requires a different temperature every application for example if you have a uh, you see as i have told you uh, in my earlier slide that uh, uh, yeah so you know every application you require uh, a storage material 30 to 90 you require 40 to 80 you require this so you could well imagine that uh, every application need a different type of uh, storage materials and uh, uh, so this is an area which is still as uh, fertile as it was when I started work uh, because uh, every this is uh, the area where you require a material who which should uh, uh, match a and uh, every uh, you could say solid liquid every mixture has to be different and to develop one geotactic it requires a lot of time because uh, you have to see the phase diagram of uh, the materials and with hit and trial reason is there is no theory at present on eutectics and uh, reason is we need eutectics because eutectics uh, they solidify and uh, they become molten at one particular temperature and that is what is required so if your temperature of solidification is varying then uh, the efficiency of uh, the process it goes on decreasing so that is why insensible heat uh, if you, if you are heating a house uh, if you are heating other things uh, 
you can uh, you see adjust that temperature could go 21 22 24 25 you can sensible but if you are using running a equipment uh, you see you require a constant if you are using a uh, uh, you see power generation system your efficiency of the system it decreases drastically if your temperature varies so that's why you require uh, a constant uh, temperature you see <clears throat> whether it is a eutectic whether it is a mixture and you require that the phase separation should not take place uh, you require that it's uh, toxic uh, it is not toxic because of the leakage you want that it should not uh, uh, you see uh, be uh, corrosive to the, uh, the because the cost is also of the containment material so the containment cost should be less uh, material cost should be less uh, and the temperature so these are there is a huge list of uh, the properties uh, which uh, you have to maintain so these are uh, the mixtures for temperature interval single eutectic and uh, temperature similarly paraffin waxes have been used uh, alkanes fatty acids have been used uh, and uh, salt hydrates have been used in the chemical reaction you see this is one particular area which is uh, very very mm -hmm. important reason is that in chemical reaction those particular chemical reactions are uh, useful in storage of the solar energy where one particular component uh, would be separated and stored separately for example one of the most important system is sulfur dioxide sulfur trioxide so you separate uh, the oxygen and uh, when you combine again it becomes sulfur dioxide and uh, again your heat is uh, generated so when you are charging the system you put the energy in this uh, so that uh, it get this uh, you see these are basically calcium hydroxide uh, calcium oxide is one of the systems which has been uh, uh, studied in this particular area you heat the calcium hydroxide it is uh, calcium oxide and water so when you put back water uh, you again get calcium hydroxide and the heat is generated advantage with this is that you can uh, separate the water and store it separately <laughs> advantage of this is although you will leave, lose some heat sensible heat but then you can store it for any amount of time and uh, heat will only get generated when you add water into this so these particular chemical and the energy storage density is very very high you see this is the lowest energy storage density that is per unit mass so how much the energy you can store this is the medium storage and this is the highest storage uh, you could say uh, uh, thermal energy storage material and this is the area which is still very fertile very fertile not many people have done work uh, in this area and this is the area which can uh, bring a uh, lot of uh, dividend as a researcher and your contribution in the area of uh, solar energy so molten salts uh, so then the next uh, you see area now which is becoming you see up till now i have been giving you the temperature the uh, you see applications which are for heat and power and there is another no area where you can and in this particular earlier application what you do is that you collect uh, solar energy and then what you do is you use use it by some other method power but then we have the solar cells in solar cells when solar radiation it is a basically a semiconductor material where there is a, a, a p and n junction so and this is a, a which is a artificial coating is there in order to ensure that uh, there is no reflection losses anti reflection coating and then you cover the glass also you have so that these particular solar cells they don't get uh, damaged because of corrosion because of dust uh, because of other thing so this is uh, uh, you see a p and n junction so this is a uh, n type uh, uh, semiconductor this is a p type so this is basically this generator electron and this uh, you see generates soul so when the uh, you see the electrons can't directly go over there because of uh, there is a, a barrier here 
and so this is the connection through which the electron move and when they go into this uh, the power is generated and you can use it uh, so the this this but this is the area which has now become commercial you see in 70s the cost of uh, uh, one particular watt uh, was 100 dollars i remember uh, a exhibition in usa uh, where uh, i asked uh, one of the stall owners who was displaying it uh, uh, you see for the first time he said cost is 100 dollars but i won't uh, 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 you see the price is 100 dollars i won't tell you the cost actually these particular systems uh, uh, i i met uh, the inventor of this all repaport so uh, uh, during the meeting he told that uh, uh, this was uh, with the bell company it was he was with the bell company so they wanted uh, to generate uh, a perennial source of power so it was that they said that we wanted to make a material that if there is a radioactive material which is uh, kept in that uh, material it will generate power and uh, it was successful and so they uh, this became that uh, the uh, you see in, on this planet we have got a new system of generating the power so after that uh, the, the semiconductors uh, material uh, that is the, the silica so which is a semiconductor which are uh, and we have uh, uh, silica uh, with one is one particular process it became the n type and the process the efficiencies and at that particular time uh, the space shuttle program you see of usa was uh, being uh, uh, formulated that in the space we will have these miles and miles of these uh, flat plate these uh, solar panels and then all the power which will be generated, that will be beamed down to the earth. but uh, later on uh, you see Became a problem for satellites. So this this is give you a history that what are the different types of uh, the solar systems. So crystalline, the highest efficiencies of the crystalline cell, single crystal, multi crystals, and uh, then we have the thin films. You see, the, these are uh, you see the cost are very high in the case of the crystalline because you have to uh, melt uh, silica. And uh, silica gets uh, temperatures are very high, so you have to melt them and crystallize them into a single ingot, and that is a very very energy intensive process. And then you have to cut uh, cut uh, the small particular vapor thin slices of that crystals, and uh, so the solar cells are made. And then you dope them with the uh, uh, you see P and N materials, and you get uh, a silicon cell. So then, uh, in order to reduce uh, the cost, uh, so then these uh, thin film technologies could came in, which uh, you can do is that uh, you could uh, deposit these on a glass or any other surface. Uh, so this is a gallium arsenide, copper calcium, cadmium telluride, uh, amorphous uh, you see silicon hydride. So these are the different areas uh, which uh, or different types of the cells. Uh, now the new emerging areas. For research, which is coming are dye cells and organic cells. So these are uh, uh, organic cells are becoming very very you know, hot area as well as research is concerned because uh, uh, the cost of these are going to be less. Let me tell you about the cost. You see earlier uh, in the 70s, the cost of uh, solar panel was uh, 200 watts uh, per watt in uh, 70s when uh, uh, you see 80s even it was 100 uh, 200 rupees per watt then it became to 200 and you know how much is the cost now it is two rupees of a cost of the power i am telling you cost of the power per watt now it is uh, rupees 2.8 pesos per unit which is less uh, than the cost uh, of the uh, fossil fuel based power generation system so if you take away all the subsidies which are going uh, to the uh, you see fossil fuel based power systems uh, then uh, i think uh, uh, nobody could beat uh, the solar system that's why uh, you see every day uh, every year 
around 100 megawatts, 200 megawatts, 500 megawatts of the solar systems are provided. But the only uh, problem at present, uh, which is uh, you see holding uh, the back, this is uh, for more wide scale application is the storage. So lithium ion batteries are quite costly. So that is another area that if somebody could come out with the low cost uh, batteries, uh, I think uh, uh, the this the problem of this world as far as energy is concerned will be over. And uh, this is uh, the, you could say the uh, move of uh, the solar energy from uh, uh, something where people used to jeer at you and something which can which has become the savior of the earth now so the areas of the solar cells is a very very important areas especially uh, there are lots of uh, some of you might be working on the dyes uh, in solar detoxification etc so maybe they can also diversify in these dye cells and also the organic cells and these are the areas which can bring you a lot of lot of uh, uh, you could say uh, dividends and uh, this is uh, uh, you see problem is we have to go away from the fossil fuel i did the analysis a long time back that uh, what is the amount of energy which is there uh, in the fossil fuel from uh, the power generation from from the o from the ore to your bulb you see we calculated that because coal is available in seams only as a result coal is available only in the seam so only uh, a very limited portion of the mine is utilized majority of it remains there as such so 50 percent losses of the coal are there in the mine itself because you only have to in order to ensure that you have high quality coal so you don't uh, uh, you see remove coal where it uh, as what is the seam? It is a coal layer. Above that will be a air, a layer of, uh, uh, you could say, uh, stone, and below also layer of a stone, which is a sand which has got converted into the stone because of the coalification process. And all the coal which you are mining today, or the gas which you are mining today, you are getting out today. It was basically a biomass which millions of years ago you see got buried into the clay and over millions of period of coalification pressure and temperature, it got converted into the coal and the gas which we are using today. So 50% of the coal remains in the mine. Then it comes to your power plant. In the power plant, you car note efficiency, decide that how much heat you can convert uh, into the power. And uh, so 50% uh, uh, you see heat is lost in a power plant if you visit any power plant you will say there is a canal of water which comes in uh, at a low temperature and the at high temperature the water moves up because the 50 percent of uh, the heat which is uh, uh, you see generated it goes in cooling because of the carnot cycle between high and the low temperature and that's why because higher the temperature more is the carnot efficiency that's why solar towers efficiencies are much higher because you are generating the power at uh, 800, 900, whereas uh, in the case of the line uh, concentrated, you are generating the power at uh, 350 okay. or so. So 50% goes over there. So 50% uh, of the 50% goes over there. Then uh, we calculated that uh, one fourth of the, uh, you see the coal, uh, you see around 25% of uh, the, uh, tra there are tra transmission losses. 25 to 30 percent and uh, then we have the grid station losses for 10 to 15 percent then we have the line losses uh, and then we have the switch losses that whenever you switch off and on the light uh, at night sometimes you can look back you will find a spark they did a study in usa that if you keep the lights open throughout 24 hours uh, your energy consumption is less than uh, switching them on and off uh, twice or uh, th thrice a day so ultimately we calculated it is 2% of the energy of the coal, which was formed 350 million years ago and whose reserves in India are only for 180 years. 
it comes out in the form of the light in the your bulb or in your uh, you see fan etc so this is where the dichotomy is that that's why solar energy is again one of the most important areas from the energy conservation point of view and the applications also you see you know earlier we used to use uh, i did a calculation when i was the uh, member of the prime minister advisory committee i calculated at that time that uh, if uh, uh, we replace 10% of the incandescent bulbs which earlier we used to use by the cfl we save 10000 megawatt and that was uh, the time uh, because of uh, my uh, you see that uh, note uh, uh, the program for cfl came in and uh, now it is uh, the uh, you could say uh, leds so the efficiency of leds is much bigger so now we are again there is going to again a going to be a revolution in the evolution now we are getting a new chemical based system where uh, even the uh, amount of the energy required for lighting will be much less <coughs> so idea is to tell you that uh, technology uh, upgradation is very important uh, for the civilization of any particular country and for the growth of any country and uh, for making uh, any country great uh, and all of you researchers should uh, try to make uh, your uh, uh, you see uh, contribution in this so this is basically i am giving you what i have told you silicon <coughs> is uh, very uh, most common 90% of the module sort and 90% uh, of them are coming from china so china became so great because uh, they basically pushed out you see the solar roof uh, project started in germany but some of the other china you see because of the commercialization large scale manufacture reduced the cost uh, so less uh, that they basically pushed all other countries uh, solar cell production facilities uh, into the grave and they became uh, the uncrowned king of uh, the solar energy so then we had the thin films so they are depositing uh, on supporting material i have already told you glass or metal and there are two main types uh, academy and telluride i have already told you that then these are the these are uh, you see these these are uh, the organic photovoltaics are very very now hot area very hot area and uh, carbon rich polymer and can be tailored to specific functions of this uh, sensitivity to a certain type of light you see now lights are coming uh, now these these cells with these cells uh, you can uh, even get a diffuse light you can even uh, now some cells have been made that moonlight can be used any type of light can be used so that's why these organic photovoltaics are becoming very important that depending upon uh, what particular type of polymer and uh, the composite uh, we are using it can be uh, you see used for one particular uh, you see type of uh, the light for example it could be used for if you are a filter you can use ultra uh, you can have a uh, you see sandwiches of uh, the various lights so the topmost will take uh, ultraviolet after that uh, the lower layer can take uh, uh, you see the visible light uh, then the infrared light so all these uh, uh, you see uh, can be uh, tailor made so that's why i was saying that this particular area organic photovoltaics is a very very important and the cost is also low so this is going to revolutionize uh, the photovoltaic uh, systems and uh, i forgot to mention i i, I think in the first slide uh, i i had uh, given you this uh, when i was giving you uh, yeah solar refrigeration so solar refrigeration can be <coughs> produced at low temperature medium temperature as well as at high temperature 
it can be used by the photovoltaic also so if you are producing electricity you can use refrigeration system or you can use uh, vapor absorption you see there are two types of system vapor absorption and vapor compression they can be based upon thermal they can be vapor compression systems could be moved based on uh, the electric uh, power also and uh, So this is the one area which uh, I forgot. Actually, this slide should have been at the other end. So the idea is that you have a solar collector. And so this is a mixture of uh, uh, lithium bromide water. It could be lithium bromide water. It could be ammonia water. You see, there. Uh, if uh, uh, I think uh, older people know, there used to be refrigerator where you just burn a candle below that uh, one place, and uh, the refrigerator will do the cooling. So that is uh, uh, one. And now with the solar energy, you could have large scale of uh, these particular systems. And these are available. These are available now in the uh, on commercial areas. So this is the examples of photovoltaic. So now you could see the amounts. So these are the megawatt based system, 100 megawatt based uh, power generation system. And uh, only problem uh, with the India is our grid, you see, although the government of India has decided that uh, by uh, 2040, we will have 40% uh, of uh, the solar radiation, so the energy from the solar. But our, you see, grid is uh, very fragile, very fragile. We got to convert our grid to the smart grid. Reason is that solar uh, sources of energy they are intermittent source of energy. If there is a cloud, the power generation just comes. So you got to have a base load power generation system. Uh, you could, it could be a nuclear, it could be a thermal. You can't wish away thermal energy because still at present, we have 74% of energy at present from uh, the fossil fuel. And uh, uh, the rest of it uh, will be uh, as you move up, Till 50% or 60% will be coming from uh, the fossil fuels. So from that point of view, uh, you see this is uh, very important that our grid should be a, a very stable grid. So if there is a little, uh, you could say, um, uh, less amount of energy which is coming, it should uh, stabilize. And uh, the example I can tell you that uh, in March, uh, when the prime minister said that uh, you switch off uh, uh, your light uh, in the evening for one hour uh, they took three days to to stabilize the grid that if uh, around uh, 39 uh, 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 gigawatt of uh, the power uh, 18 gigawatt of the power is suddenly goes off uh, uh, whether our uh, how we can keep our grid uh, safe safe so this is an example that how fragile our uh, grid is and if we are going on a very large scale as far as the solar power applications of solar energy are concerned our grid also need to be modified so this is uh, a, another slide uh, which uh, uh, you see i am giving you uh, this is all what i have discussed with you heating water for home commercial agriculture agriculture so glaze batch collector liquid heat exchanger hot water system all these Similarly, swimming pool, and this is a very important area. If you come to Mahali, I designed uh, their, uh, uh, you see, uh, the swimming pools in Mahali on uh, their, uh, uh, you see, which have been on their, uh, these, uh, uh, where uh, people game, uh, play games, etc. So these are very, very good, very good uh, systems based upon uh, the solar water heating. Heating and ventilation, uh, building, uh, you see, uh, uh, heating and cooling. If you come to my house, I built that house in 1979. So I had, uh, it is a passive house. So during uh, the winter, I don't have to use any heaters. Even in summer, it is qu quite comfortable. I have double walls, etc. So I developed a software in, uh, uh, you see at that particular time uh, to design the overhangs. Uh, you, so that in my house, if you come, uh, the building design is such that uh, from 1st April, no uh, solar radiation will get into my house. And from 1st October, the solar radiations uh, will start coming in. 
and uh, I made uh, at that time maybe it was the first software. I couldn't commercialize it, but anyway. And uh, I had to at that time when I made this house, I had to pay penalty for this because they said uh, that uh, you have put in the projections uh, and this is against the bylaws. So when they used to call me for lectures on passive architecture, I used to tell them, uh, please refund my money, which uh, you have charged in order to make my house. Uh, uh, this strong wall, this is another very important area. I designed the strong wall at Delhi, you see in one of the buildings. And this strong wall is that uh, one wall is painted, uh, uh, you see black and you put a glass, uh, uh, window glass in front of it so that the uh, this uh, wall gets heated and the cold air come from the bottom and hot air goes to inside you. So these are some of the passive applications. And now there is another area which is very, I think, uh, uh, important area in foreign countries. It is commercialized, but India, not many people. It is the smart windows. Smart windows are the ones, uh, it is like uh, your uh, photochromatic uh, uh, UC windows that uh, if uh, by putting, uh, you see, uh, electric charge, you can make uh, the glass black and by again uh, switching off, uh, the window becomes uh, uh, transparent. So you can use the same window in summer and winter. In summer, you can make it black. Uh, in winter, you can make it white. So this is the area that is the smart window. Some of you could uh, get into this area. This is a very, very hot area. You can make uh, uh, plastic films and you will be very, very uh, important uh, entrepreneur because entrepreneurship is now coming, maybe you could use. So similarly, the cooling of building, vacuum tube collector, glaze flag collector, daylighting in the building. Uh, this is a very important area. And uh, uh, if uh, you come to my house, you will find that I don't require absolutely any light during the day. All the, uh, you see daylighting has been done. Reason is that the daylighting is not from window and uh, daylighting is from the ventilator. Unfortunately, because of the Western, uh, you see, we are aping Western people. We feel window is the one and uh, fenestration, we call it fenestration. And the best uh, day lighting is uh, from uh, the ventilators. Our old buildings, I once uh, went to, I think it is a time for me to stop now because Rajiv has told me that uh, some, so these are the applications uh, and uh, and these are the areas, uh, solar thermal areas, cost of solar system, increasing the conversion efficiency, development of UV resistance, uh, recyclable polymer to glass, uh, development of UV resistant heat conductant film for resorption, coating black, uh, high performance paint using nanotechnology, nanothermal fluids for parabolic concentrators, nano glass parabolic concentrator, low cost stable thermal energy storage system, photovoltaic system, developing dice and styles. So these are uh, some of uh, the areas uh, in which you could work. Uh, thank you very much. I think I have uh, taken more time than what I should. Thank you. Any 